Marquetry is the art of using different pieces of veneer to decorate a surface. Technically, this project, which uses a repeated geometric pattern, is called parquetry, like a parquet floor. I used the technique to decorate the case of this little musical instrument called an ottavino. It's basically a mini harpsichord. I'll post another video soon showing how the instrument is built, but in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to produce this stunning marquetry veneer. This is a somewhat advanced and very time-consuming project, so if you're new to veneering or marquetry, I'd suggest starting with an introductory book like the one listed below. We need to make up a whole bunch of these little squares. Half of them are in a diamond pattern, and half of them are in a reverse diamond pattern. For the diamond pattern, this is made up out of triangles with the grain running parallel to the long end of the triangle, and for the reverse diamond, the grain runs perpendicular. Each square is about one inch on a side, so to make them up, we need strips of wood half an inch wide. This is some walnut veneer with a nice strong grain pattern, but before cutting the strips to make triangles, we're gonna put some veneer tape on the back. These little triangles are awfully fragile and the tips will break off. So first, the veneer tape goes on the back and that'll help hold it all together. This is some one inch veneer tape, a little bucket of water, we'll moisten the veneer tape. and lay it on nice and flat. Put another piece on, and it doesn't matter if these overlap at all. The tape is awfully thin. Okay, the veneer tape's on. I'm gonna blot off some of the excess water. You can see it's already starting to curl from the moisture being on one side. On the back side, I'm gonna apply a veneer softener. This is Constantine's veneer softener. Comes in a concentrate. Mix it up in a spray bottle. I'm going to spray this on the back side. This has a plasticizer in it that'll help the veneer stay nice and flat once it dries. So we'll wipe off the excess. I'm going to put down a piece of newspaper that'll absorb some of the moisture. A nice flat block of wood and some weights. All right, here's our piece of veneer. Tape on the back, nice and secure, ready to go. First, we're gonna make one edge straight, parallel to the grain as possible. This straight edge has some cork on the back that keeps things from slipping. And I'm just gonna use a regular utility knife here to cut this. Don't be afraid to change the blades frequently, they're pretty cheap and a fresh blade makes all the difference. First take a light pass, then a heavier pass. So now we've got one edge straight. <clears throat> this is my cutting mat. It's a piece of self-healing plastic with a straight edge on the back on a piece of plywood. So the straight edge goes right up against here. I've got to cut some half inch wide strips. So I've got two spacers that are both half an inch. They go against there. And with them in place, and the veneer tight up against the back edge, we can cut a perfect strip, half an inch wide. Again, I'll do a light pass first, just to score it, and a heavier pass. and you should be able to do it in two or three passes. The reverse diamonds, the basic idea is the same, except this time, of course, we're cutting across the grain. It may take four or even five passes to go through the veneer this way. Now that our half inch strips are prepared, we can cut them into triangles. I'm gonna use this X-Acto saw. It's got a nice fine tooth blade. It comes as part of this miter box set, but the miter box just has way too much wiggle room to be precise. So I made my own miter box out of wood. This has a nice tight 90 degree cut here. You can make that cut by using a square stop block as a saw guide to guide your saw and using a similar technique, make a 45 degree cut. It doesn't have to be very deep, certainly less than the saw blade. Remember, we're just cutting veneer. I also have a keel on the bottom that lets me clamp it to my workbench vise. 45 degree miter, make a cut at the end of a strip, then flip it over and at 90 degrees, we're gonna cut off the triangle like this. This stop block keeps each piece at exactly the same size. You wanna do this in some nice light passes so it doesn't move. And 
and here's our first triangle. I made the stop block in two parts so that you can get in and remove the triangle but keep it at the right setting. And also this is nice and thin so I can get my finger in here to support the triangle. Some of the triangles we cut out from one strip of wood, we're going to make each square up out of four triangles, but you don't want to use four consecutive pieces. Instead, you want to use alternate sides of the strip to make up each square. And that way, if there's a particular grain pattern that's strongly figured, it'll wrap around neatly and give you a nice looking diamond pattern. Like so. For reverse diamonds, I think your best bet is to use the pieces from the same position on each of four consecutive strips to get the best grain match up and to avoid using veneer that has a very strong grain pattern. Otherwise, they're put together the same way. To assemble the squares, first tape down a piece of contact paper. This is just stuff that's sold for lining shelves. Put it down from sticky side up on a board. And to glue these together, I'm just going to use a little PVA glue. Just regular Elmer's glue is perfectly fine for this. Run a tiny little bead of glue on the edge inside one of the triangles. Lay it down so. This doesn't have to give a lot of strength. The strength later is going to come from some more veneer tape. But this just holds the pieces in place. A little more glue for this piece. Batch of them are made up, lay down a sheet of wax paper and a flat call and some weights so they can dry nice and flat. Once they're dry, peel them off with the contact paper very carefully. If some of these have some imperfections, like there's a little gap right here, don't worry about it. You can still use this piece later where you'll need some half size pieces. And then until you need them, stack them together and clamp them between two pieces of wood to help keep them all flat until you need them. Between each of these squares are little pieces of inlay. I got this quarter inch inlay strip. They come in three foot lengths from a variety of suppliers. And I cut them to one inch. It's gotta be the exact same length as the side of one of your squares. So I set up a different stop block here in the miter box. And I'm just gonna cut out about a million of these little guys. What we need before assembly are these little mother of pearl squares. You can get the mother of pearl in thicker blocks or in thin sheets. I'm using the thin sheet material. Where our inlay strip is thicker than the veneer, this mother of pearl inlay is actually much thinner. It's only about nine thousandths of an inch thick. It's also extremely brittle. So to solve both those problems, I'm going to glue it into a double thickness. First, I cut it into quarter inch strips using quarter inch spacers and the regular setup here. Then I took two of the strips and glued them together using some super glue. The thin type cyanoacrylate glue works well for this. And once it's glued up and dried, it's much sturdier a little easier to work with and it's almost as thick as the veneer. You can then take the strip and put it in the miter box with a little stop block and start cutting out these little squares. Uh, one last thing is that mo this mother of pearl dust is said to be toxic so don't breathe in the dust. To start assembling the veneer, the substrate I'm using is a high quality Baltic birch plywood. I've already veneered and finished the inside part which is much easier to do in these inside corners before you assemble the case. The case has a molding strip on the top and also one on the bottom and a corner molding too. So using those as a guide, I've marked out and measured the area for the field that's going to be veneered. We're going to make the veneer a little oversized and then trim it to the final size later. To assemble the veneer, I've got a board of plywood with a generous piece of contact paper ready to go. Back here I taped on a straight edge as a reference guide and I've got all the parts we need. The squares, the inlay strips, the mother of pearl dots, and this 45 degree angle is going to be very helpful. It started, use the 45 degree triangle to lay down a straight edge. And with the straight edge as a guide, you can start laying in squares, alternating the diamond and the reverse diamond pattern. And in between, put the one inch strips of the inlay banding. At the top and the bottom, if you have some defective squares, you can lop them off and use them because only part of this is going to be visible. Next step is to start laying down the next row with some more of these one inch strips. Hard to see here, but there's a little square of the mother of pearl inlay, and then start building it up with the next strip, working your way down. The field assembled and ready to tape together. A couple little pearls of advice here. The first is to make it oversized so that you can even up the edges later and have it symmetric. Next is to make sure you check the angle with every row. If it starts getting out of alignment, it's very hard to fix later. 
Next is to make sure that your squares really are the same size. If any are bigger than the others, it's going to mess up the whole pattern. If some are too large, you can trim them to size. If they're too small, well, you can lop them in half and use them on the edge pieces here. If you have some small gaps, that's okay because we're going to use a wood filler later. Before you tape it together, make sure that you have alternated the diamonds and reverse diamonds. It's going to be very hard to fix that mistake later. And the last piece of advice is that the face you're looking at is the one that's going to show on the outside of your piece. So if one side of the um, mother of pearl looks better than the other, you want the side that looks best facing up. It's finally time to tape this thing together. I would definitely recommend practicing on a piece of scrap wood. In doing so, I found that the veneer tape doesn't stick real well to the mother of pearl. So to help it stick better and to fill in the gap from the thickness difference, I put a little dollop of, of PVC glue on each piece of mother of pearl. This is water soluble even after it dries, so it'll come off with no problem. Then we just take a nice piece of veneer tape, moisten it in some water, and start laying these down. We'll blot off the excess moisture, put down some newspaper to absorb the moisture, flat piece of plywood, and then we'll put this under some weights to dry for a couple hours. Once the tape dries, you can very carefully remove the veneer from the contact paper. You start to get an idea of how pretty this is going to look when it's done. The surface I'm veneering is three and a half inches wide, and I'm going to trim off the top edge here. I've marked it out so that three and a half inches gives me an equal spacing above and below the mother of pearl dots. Then just with a straight edge and the utility knife, I'm going to trim the top edge. All right, marquetry fans, it's finally time to glue this into place. I've sanded this with 150 grit to make a nice flat surface to glue down. I figured out where I want this to sit left to right so that the edges are even. Then I marked the veneer right here with a corresponding mark on the substrate. This is going to line up with the marked edge at the top. The sides and the bottom are still oversized. They're going to be trimmed later on. The glue I'm using is this cold press veneer glue. I've had great results with it before. Well, here we go. This is the point of no return. I would definitely recommend using a glue roller. This is the best way of getting a nice even coat all around, especially around the edges where the veneer is at risk for peeling off. You want this to have the consistency of wet paint when it's done. Go just over the marked edges here. If it looks a little glue starved, you can always add a little bit more. Any excess, you can roll right off. All right, looking good. Well, here we go. Let's line this up at the top. I'm going to use a couple pieces of painter's tape to help hold this in place so it doesn't creep when the clamps are applied. These will come off easily later on. Then got some pads of paper towel to even out the pressure. Nice thick call and I'll put some clamps on here. Just five or ten minutes take it out of the clamps because now it's time to true up the edges in the bottom. This is the corner molding that's going to be on the finished product. Using that as a guide and a sharp utility knife, you can score through the veneer. It might take a while, but eventually you can get through and then remove the excess on the sides. For the bottom, the idea is the same. This is a piece of the bottom molding. I made a little jig out of it so that I can hold it against the bottom and come along with the utility knife and trim off the excess bottom that way. Any glue squeeze out, like you see here at the top, you can get this with a moistened paper towel. A little scraper works well for this too, or a putty knife to get all the glue out of there before it cures. Left the clamps on overnight, and now it's time to remove the veneer tape. I'm going to moisten it with some water. This is the fun part, the moment of truth, where you see how things really turned out. The water takes a few minutes to soften the veneer tape, and then it peels right off. This process is pretty painstaking because, remember, we've got two layers of veneer tape to take off. Also some of the glue residue and the white glue we put on the mother of pearl. A 
putty knife can be very helpful for getting this veneer tape off, but what it really takes is patience to let the water do its job. Even after all the visible tape's been removed, you're not done yet. You still have to keep going to remove any little bits of adhesive residue, any glue squeeze out, especially on these mother of pearl dots where we put the white glue. Alternating between wiping it down with a sponge and then rubbing it off with a paper towel helps remove the adhesive residue. Sometimes a little steel wool is helpful too. That ought to do it. It's just about there. We are going to be sanding this, but you don't want any gummy residue still on here when we sand. This looks great. I can't wait to see what it looks like when the finish is applied. I just finished sanding this with 150 grit. The idea is to even out the surface here. The inlay strips were much thicker than the walnut veneer, and they're both thicker than the mother of pearl. So we want a fairly even surface here. When you're sanding, be super careful you don't sand all the way through the veneer, especially around the edges. Next, I'm going to fill the pores using a wood filler. I like this Wonder Fill that's sold by Rockler, but there are a lot of other brands. I thin it with a little water so it's the consistency of heavy paint, and then just apply it with a rubber spatula. This is going to fill in any little defects, but also fill the pores in the walnut itself. I used to think pore filling was kind of a waste of time, but I've learned that if you want a super smooth mirror-like surface in an open-grained wood like walnut or mahogany, it's essential to fill the pores. Once all the gap's in, you can squeegee off the excess here using the rubber spatula. Typically, you do this perpendicular to the grain, but in this project, of course, the grain direction is all over the place. and you can then use a paper towel to sort of blot off some of the excess. Once the wood filler dries, sand it with 150 and then 220 grit. If you do end up sanding through the veneer or there are any major defects, you can chisel them out and replace them with another piece, but it's a real pain in the neck, so be real careful when sanding. The remainder of the video, I'm gonna show you my finishing techniques. If you made it this far in the project, you probably have your own favorite finish, but I like shellac. It's pretty much foolproof, it's non-toxic, and I think it looks great. I make my shellac from flakes. This is beige shellac flakes. It gets mixed with denatured alcohol. I'm making a one pound cut, which is the equivalent of an ounce of flakes in one cup of alcohol. Mix that up in a little squeeze bottle. And then I'm gonna make a finishing pad out of some cotton t-shirt material. Like I bought this in the big box stores, wiping cloths. And inside the t-shirt material goes some cotton batting or some felt. We put that inside, we're gonna soak that up with shellac and then it makes a nice little finishing pad. This is the lid of the project. The first thing to do is to clean off any dust with a tack cloth. And then to charge up the finishing pad, I just fill it up with a little of the shellac. I keep it in a Tupperware container when I'm not using it so it stays good. I bundle it up so there's no sharp edges. And then you just wipe this on like you're buffing a car. The first coat of shellac soaks into the wood and takes a couple hours to really dry. After that, each additional coat is just a few minutes. I put on about four or five coats here and then let it dry for a while, and now it's time to smooth the finish. If you were doing a French polish, at this point you'd be putting some mineral oil on the bottom of the pad and rubbing it around to smooth out the finish. I've never quite gotten the hang of that, so instead I'm going to do some wet sanding. If you sand the shellac with dry sandpaper, it clogs the paper and these little corns cause scratches in the surface, so instead I'm going to use wet or dry sandpaper. You can get this at the big box stores or an automotive paint supplier. I'm going to start with 220 grit and a sanding pad, just moisten it with some water, and then go around in circular motion. After wet sanding, let it dry for a couple hours. You don't want any moisture trapped under the next layer of shellac. It looks terrible now. Most of the shellac has been sanded off, but it'll stay behind in the pits and valleys, and that's going to lead to a level surface. Then add on more layers of shellac. I put on three coats of shellac and then wet sanded it with 400 grit, then added another three coats and wet sanded it with 600 grit, and now it's time for the final coats. For these I want a thinner coat of shellac, so I'm just going to dilute what's already in the pad with some plain alcohol. And for these last coats, I'm going to use this kind of motion, so it only behind any streaks or puddles. This is sort of like an airplane landing and taking off again. A few more coats like that and that's it. You know you're done when you can see a nice reflection in it. 
Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.